So welcome to the podcast, Lauren McDougall. Lauren, how are you, Mary? Oh, well. I'm very good, Rob. Just enjoying the little bit of respite from the cold in Glasgow because it's been pretty cold the last couple of days and it's now gone up to maybe zero degrees. <laughs> it's, got, it's gone up to zero. Yeah, I think we're pretty much the same here in Northern Ireland. Yeah, so oh, there you go. But right at the minute, you're in deep in preparations, actually, for a huge gig that's coming up. And that's exactly why we brought you on the show this week. We want to hear more about this massive show of Celtic Connections. Tell us about this. So this is an idea that's that's been on the go for a long time. I don't want to claim credit for the idea because it wasn't my idea. Um, I believe that um, Ian Duncan, who the show is really all about now, wanted to recreate this album, uh, Names and Places, which is a, an album that they recorded in 1990 with the, the Vale of Athelpite band, along with the folk group Eclipse First. And this has been in discussion since um, before COVID. Um. And I think there was there's been some people like Finlay McDonald um that have been behind us to to put it together. Um and Kenny Forsyth is is the man that that really had the idea to make it happen. Um Kenny is my predecessor in the Tannehill Weavers. Um I played with the Tannies in 2013 to 2018 or 19. Uh, Kenny was back in the nineties, uh, but through through the Tannehill Weavers, I'm um, celebrating our fiftieth anniversary concert at Celtic Connections. Actually, I met Kenny, um, and we've been talking about ideas for for shows and and doing good stuff for promoting pipe and ever since. So this was one of the ideas. So it's called Names and Places Twenty Twenty Three, um, and the the whole thing has been fa- fairly sort of organic with how it came about and how it's been growing arms and legs originally it was just going to be that as a show mm-hmm. um, and we we always wanted it to be a tribute to Ian Duncan um, because Kenny says I mean what Kenny says about Ian Duncan is, is what everyone thinks about Ian Duncan he's just he's a, he is a legend he's the most kindest man in piping um, most people have been influenced in, by him in some sort of way um, so we're we're doing what what I've been calling a soft tribute. It's not going to be in any way weepy or gushy or emotional or over emotional, but it's going to be just a, an enjoyable concert. So the Youth Pipe Band got in touch to say they'd quite like to be involved. Right. Yeah. So I thought, right, okay, we'd love to have you involved, but <laughs> you're gonna have to do something for us. Oh, I see. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so. I said that's great. Okay, I've, like I mean, we're just we're just playing a game. Of course, we'd love to do the pipe band involved, but <laughs> um, I thought, well, how can we make it relevant to the second half of the concert, which would be yeah. names and places? So I thought, let's get these guys to study and recreate some classic Vale medleys or concert sets, um, which they have done. And uh, we had a rehearsal back at the start of, uh, I guess I think it was the start of November, and I was so impressed with what they had done. Um, they'd really, really studied it. They'd studied the the essence of the band's music and they'd managed to recreate it. And it was early days then, listening back to the rehearsal recordings, it's all it's a bit slow and careful. But I think once we get it up to up to speed for the, the concert, um it's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. There you go. So I have to say, I am a massive Villa Vothel fan. And I, of course, from those days in the, the early 90s, late 90s even, the band had their own style, their own voice. You know, and so is this something then we're going to see revisited then at this concert? Currently, yes, yeah, um, it's going to be like I say they have studied. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to give away any spoilers, <laughs> but certain things that the Veil vale do musically will be recreated. Did musically will be recreated, um, and again, it's just such an easy thing to do because everyone loves it. Everyone yeah. loves the Veil. Vale, everyone loves Ian Duncan, and it's just a. It's just a joy to to pick up these wee things and think, well, that's what the field did. Let's let's recreate it and pay tribute to it. Yeah. Um, and sort of modernize isn't really the word I'm looking for, but um, I, I can't really find the word I'm looking for. It's not update either, but just sort of bring it onto the the sort of stage for 2023. There you go. Yeah, bring forward that music from an old yeah. generation to a new generation. Yeah. I think. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. I think the thing with a lot of younger musicians these days is that they don't listen to that stuff. And I I, I hate saying that because I feel like an old funny daddy. And I heard people telling me that who were, you know, 20, 30 years older than me when I was in my teens, 20s. 
Yeah. But now I see where they were coming from. So I think it's good to to listen back to that stuff and realize where everything we're doing now. Mm. Oh, absolutely. It's been a topic of debate on our show this last while because at the World Championships, we had the 70s tribute band that was there. Yeah. And oh, my word, everyone was talking about them. You yeah. know, think, wow, that music was incredible. And then suddenly now everyone's looking at these old recordings. I so know. I'm hoping that's the case. I'm hoping that sales of that album will now skyrocket as a result. <laughs> I don't know if it still exists. I got mine off of eBay. <laughs> 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 the, I used to have a copy of it and I've got it the house. I can't find it. Oh, I found my original copy of the 78th in Live in Ireland 87. I found that, uh, but I, I managed, I couldn't find it. So, like you, I've been, yeah, looking it through eBay. Something, something <laughs> I was doing through lockdown was buying these old, it was still just CDs. I was buying them off of eBay. Mm. I was putting them onto a stereo mm-hmm. and then I, was, I was reading the sleeve notes while I was listening to it. That's just something that ah. I was so missed these days. There you are. Absolutely. And there's only there's a paragraph about each set, but you're still thinking, right, okay, well, and you know, Robert Matheson's The Big Burrow was a big big one for me. Big tune, so I've, yeah. I've not wrote, read those sleeve notes in about 20 years, but you, you read how the musicians became involved, what the, the thoughts were behind writing the tunes, mm. things like that that you don't get anymore. I don't know why. I don't know why Spotify don't just add a little Yeah, paragraph. like a note section or something. Yeah. 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 Something so you know why, why these people have made these decisions for these tracks. There you go, exactly. And even like reading the thank yous as well, and you know, the credits yes. and stuff. Yeah, fascinating. I, I love reading all of that stuff. So no, I'm right there with you for sure. Yeah. So for folks interested then who are hopefully going to be attending this event, well, let's face it, you are, because this event's one not to miss. You can go to the Celtic Connections website right now. Uh, so it's Celticconnections.com and just search for it, names and places. Just type it into the search engine in the site. And you'll find it. So on here, it does give a bit of a list of who's going to be involved on stage here. So do you want to tell us about some of these folks here? Do you want to name drop there, Lauren? <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, again, this has been fairly, it's came, it came together hmm. over months. Um, the first question was sort of like, will we, will we manage to get the guys that did the original album? Yeah. yeah it's the original Pipers. Uh, which was just a small mini pipe band, or maybe even a, a quartet, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, these guys are now still playing, but no longer local <laughs> to yeah. uh, to Scotland. Um, so the first two names are Malcolm Robertson and Ad- Adrian Melvin. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably names are fairly familiar to to pipe band people. Absolutely, yeah. They're they're both in the states now, uh, but Celtic Connections have been generous enough to allow us to bring them over. Mm. Um. We've got Gary West, of course, who's um he's been um still been very active with the, the, the sort of veil stuff for a long time. Yeah, uh, absolutely. He, he's mm-hmm. available, <laughs> he'll be there. Yeah. Uh, Kenny, like I said, Kenny was the guy that, that brought it together. Um mm-hmm. and he'll be joining us as well. <laughs> and then we've got Trist. Um so so Trist is sort of where the 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 thing began. The, the very, very basic original idea was to use Trist. And Trist are a 10-piece um, pipe group um, that in, includes myself um, and nine other composer pipers. Is, is sort of how we started um, trying to write and perform new music for 10 pipes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that the idea started off with it just being Trist doing the album um, before we, we realised it was going to be possible to expand on it. I so we, we'll be yeah. sort of the core of it. Um, and using that as a as a sort of way to bring dynamics to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're not it's not going to be everyone in all the time. We're going to make sure there's there's you know there's sort of in my mind there's four groups involved in the the show. There's going to be the the legacy pipers, which yes. is what I've been calling the Adrian, uh, Malcolm, and Gary. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're going to have a smaller group of Trist, which is four four members of Trist who have actually been very familiar with the album since growing up mm-hmm. um so myself uh, Fenley mcdonald uh, ross ainsley and ali hutton so ross and ali going through the veil um yeah. so we're going to be the sort of quartet then there's the full traced band and then there's the youth pipe band as well so even though the youth pipe band are doing the first half mm-hmm. um the finale is epic Right. So no more than that. Oh, we've been working hard, and it's it's going to be amazing. 
<laughs> there you are. I have to say, whenever this was first advertised, I read the listings and I thought, oh my word, this is going to be special. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, looking at the list of folks who are involved here, like there's quite a number of names here from the trad and folk scene involved as well. A lot yeah. of well known names in here. Uh, so, yeah, very exciting musically. So, if you don't mind me saying, then, Lauren, the reason why we're chatting with yourself is because you are the musical director of all of this. You're responsible for piecing this puzzle together. Um, so how have rehearsals been going so far? How have you found this challenge? They've been going great. Um, we've been we've only had two we've had two rehearsals with the, the backing band, which were just in the last couple of days. We had the the rehearsal with the youth pipe band, um, one of two rehearsals with the youth pipe band um, a month ago. Uh, it's, again, it's great. The music is so musical, if that makes sense. It's not difficult to learn or play. It's very enjoyable to learn and play. So the backing band have been chosen. You know, like th- these are guys that play with pipers a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, John John Martin was an obvious choice because he's he's played with the Tannehill Weavers uh, yeah. for you know fifty years. Well, no, not quite fifty years, but um, thirty over thirty years. Mm-hmm. Um, the other guys. I mean, what I noticed working really well for the last couple of rehearsals was Craig Baxter and Gus Sicard. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah. Craig, Craig's on Baran. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gus has um, visited and, and revised all the scores. Mm-hmm. Uh, but of course, because Craig is a pipe band drummer as well, he's able to follow the the snare drum scores and lock in with that. I see. And the awareness of the rhythm section, so that the, the um, we've got guitar and bazooki, uh, and double bass, um, their awareness to what the drum corps is doing is also very important. Um, mm. They're very much locking in and making sure they're not going to get in the way of each other. I see, yeah. So, the, yeah, in that way, the rehearsals have been fantastic. You know, we've just, we've, we've left it, we've, we've sort of gotten through what we wanted to do and just had some great fun as well. For the, the two rehearsals we've done so far. If you ask me this on the 3rd of February, <laughs> <laughs> it might be a different story. It could be different. There you go. Well, I have to say, now, I have a claim to fame now. I actually met Ian Duncan, uh, and I was completely starstruck. Um, I met him at the Trad Awards, actually, a few weeks right. ago here in December as we were recording this. And I... I don't know. I was stumbling over my words. I was like, "Oh, but hi, Ian, how you?" Do? And I was shaking I'm hands still, with him. I'm still the same. I met him in the train station a while ago, and I was the exact same. He's a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> and I think everyone's got their own sort of memories of how they met Ian. Ian used to do the um, standard grade exams. Oh yeah. So mm. If you were studying pipes, you know you'd be absolutely bricking yourself about your piping exam, and then you get in, and then this lovely man <laughs> would be there. Just being so kind to you and just talking to you and giving you, giving you little bits of advice and just helping you through it. Um, yeah, great people are like that. That's it. He certainly has a legacy of piping for sure, and with the history with the Vale of Athol pipe band, as you say, he's been one of the most influential uh, pipe majors I think in his time. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was tripping over my words a bit starstruck. And uh, I did ask him at the time, uh, I said, well, I believe there's a a concert coming up in Celtic Connections. And he's so humble. He says, oh, aye, aye, there's a wee show coming up now in February, I think. Aye, aye, it'll be good. (laughs) What? (laughs) So humble. So, uh, yeah, but that that was just classic Ian Duncan. So, yeah, I have to say. that, That is the vibe that we're going for. That's the mood of the concert. Yeah, just very yeah. chilled out and very it's relaxed. Be chilled out, it's going to be humble, but it's going to be very good as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have absolutely no doubt. So just to remind folks again, then, the whole point in the conversation then is to direct people to the Celtic Connections website right now and grab tickets for this. This is the annual Pipe Band concert, but it's not really a Pipe Band concert as we're used to. You know, like a, a Pipe Band's not going to come up here and play for two hours and then walk off. As you say, there's like four different bands and things that are sort of interacting here, Lauren, yeah. Yeah, it's a sort of five if you include the the folk band, the backing band. Yeah, yeah, of course, that's it. So it's all happening on the 4th of February, 12.30 in the afternoon, which is smashing. Uh, so And then it's in the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall and grab tickets now on the Celtic Connections website. There you are. So, I think, uh, yeah, I think I've been told that um, grab tickets now before... Uh, January starts because that's when people get their gift vouchers for Celtic Connections. So there you go, exactly. Yeah. So unfortunately, th- this will probably go out at the start of January. So everyone, 
if, if you're listening right, go now. We'll include a link in the show notes and you can get your tickets for this. Seriously. It's an show as well, so you can pretend it's it's a contest. You can go to the beer tent. There you go. Up across the road after the show. <laughs> <laughs> by 3 p.m. There you go. Exactly. 100%. And even for folks like me here stuck in Northern Ireland, you're able to do it on the day trip then. Fly into Glasgow that morning, get the concert in the afternoon, fly home in the evening. Of course. Yeah. What's not to love? So, Lauren, I have to say, I'm a huge fan of this idea. I think it's absolutely a fitting tribute. And yeah, it should be warmly received by the piping scene, for sure. Have you any kind of little inklings of anything we can expect to see in the show? I'm not asking for spoilers, but just a wee flavor before we say our Cheerios. Um, <laughs> just try to do the, yeah, I did, I did the, the music folder was floating about, but it isn't anymore. Ah, that's all right. Well, if anything, I think that I know that you guys are going to be setting up a bit of a social media presence for the show and like uploading like little teasers yes, and things like that. There's a social media uh, presence. I think it's um not any other pipe band concert, something like that. I'll need to, you could maybe bring that up if you could see it there. I said no, I can't at the moment. No, but yeah, we'll certainly try and find I'll that. Yeah, I can put it on the screen. Um, yeah, but yeah, so uh. uh Trying to think. I mean, the Galician jigs will be played. I'll tell you that much. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> well, Lauren, I have to say, there's a wealth of other questions and stuff I could be asking you right now, but um, we're 100% focused on this uh, concert coming. I know I wish you the very best for it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, hopefully this will not be the last. We'll see you here in the Rab Show. But, uh, yeah, but we'll hopefully catch up with you at Celtic then. Indeed. Yeah. Thanks, Rab. Do well. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>